In today's video, I'm going to show you two methods for fixing faces. And I'm also going to be showcasing a turbo model, a fine tune that I have really been enjoying. So let's get into it. All right. So first things first, I wanted to show you the model I'm going to be using for the workflows in this video. We're going to be using Turbo Vision XL. This is so far the best turbo model that I've used. Uh, and while, like all turbo models, it does have some aspects that are not quite as aesthetically pleasing as you would get in a full model, it does a very good job in general. And for the purposes of our workflows today, uh, specifically the second workflow I'll be showing, which is a bit more advanced, it's really helpful to have a model that runs fast because there will be instances where we are doing many passes. Uh, so when you're only doing five steps rather than 30, it goes much, much faster. I highly recommend trying this model out for all sorts of different purposes. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're just going to be generating a portrait image using a two pass through that turbo model. And it's basically a high res fix. So we're going to be doing a latent upscale of 1.25. And then we're going to go ahead and pass that into this face restore node. And this is a custom node that we'll need to install. So I'll show you how to do that right now. So you're going to want to have Comfy UI Manager. And you'll click into that. And we'll go into Install Custom Nodes. You're going to search for Face Restore. And that will bring up the Face Restore CF, which stands for Code Former. Uh, and this is going to allow us to do a very basic face restoration. So you'll go ahead and click Install. Once you've installed that, as you can see here, it says you'll need to download the face restoration model. I believe that the node will actually install, or rather download the, the necessary models at runtime. But if you run into issues with that, here's what you can do. You're going to go ahead and click Install Models, and then you'll search for Face Restore. Make sure not to put a space this time. So all one word, Face Restore. And here are the models that you'll need to install. So you can see that for our workflows, we actually only need these top two and then the yellow V5L face. So you install those. And then you'll go ahead and restart Comfy UI and then restart the uh, refresh the page in your browser. And then you'll be good to go for this workflow. So we installed two face restore models. We're only going to be actually using the GFP GAN model in these workflows that we're walking through today. But the code former has some advantages as well. Uh, the reason that we're using the GFP GAN model today is because it does a better job at getting the general structures of the face fixed at the cost of making things appear smoothed, where the code form model can do a better job at making a realistic face that doesn't seem so smoothed over. It doesn't do quite as good a job at fixing some larger abnormalities. So actually, for the purposes of this workflow, where we're just using the simple face fix, uh, it, it's a good idea to to play around with each and kind of see what works best for the aesthetic you're going for in your final image. But okay, now that we've talked through this, we'll go ahead and run it and see what we get. All right, so it's all done. And let's go ahead and compare some of these images that we have. So we're going to go in and just take a look. So this is our very first pass. You can see that there are definitely some issues with the faces. Fairly good for a first stake on a turbo model, but certainly, especially in the eyes, not looking totally like we'd want. So now we'll go ahead and see what it looks like in the second pass. And you can see that things have certainly gotten better, but they are not totally uh, fixed. Eyes are still not quite right everywhere. Uh, most of the rest of the face, however, does look pretty good. So now we're going to go ahead and see what our fixed faces look like. So you can see it has fixed a lot of the issues with the shape of the eyes. Um, but you can also tell that 
we've lost some of the uniqueness of the faces. Things are a bit more smoothed over, uh, and they're a bit lower resolution as well. So certainly some trade-offs in this simple face fix technique. Uh, and real quick, I'll explain actually what's what's going on here. So this node takes in a face restore model, which is performing the modifications to the image. Uh, and then this uh, restore node also is going to use a face detection model that will find where the face is and then feed that into this model to actually make the changes there. Uh, this code former fidelity doesn't have any effect when you're using the GFP GAN model, but when you use the code former model, it will change the amount of modification that is done and how heavily it adheres to the original image. So we'll go ahead and set it to zero. See what kind of effects we get. Okay, so there we go. So you can see immediately that CodeFormer does actually have advantages here in the uniqueness of the faces. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and set it to one. And you can see this keeps the faces much closer to their original form, but at the expense of some quality. And we could try in the center. And now we have a balance of the two. Oh, certainly something to experiment with. Let's go ahead and take a look at the advanced technique and the differences that we see there. All right. Here we go. And so we can see that the beginning of this workflow is actually exactly the same as our last workflow. Uh, and we're then feeding it into this advanced face fix group, which is going to require us to install another set of custom notes. So we'll go ahead and head into the manager and go to install custom nodes again. And we're going to want to look for impact. And so this is a set of nodes made by Dr. Lieutenant Data, or Data, I suppose. Uh, and this set of nodes is an amazing toolbox that I have just begun to really delve into that provides all sorts of really interesting tools for segmentation. It provides some UI updates that allow you to actually edit masks and use segmentation uh, inside Comfy UI, which I'll be showcasing in future videos. Uh, so just a whole lot of really awesome tools that you can use in this pack, but we'll just be using the face detailer node today. Nonetheless, you'll want to install the entire pack. So go ahead and install that. You'll then want to restart Comfy UI again and refresh the browser page once again. Now we'll go through and see what we're going to be using from this new node pack and what kind of results we're going to get. So. Basically, what we have here is this face detailer node, which acts as several nodes kind of combined into one. So we are feeding it this detector, which is going to find faces. It's very similar to actually what's being used in this space restore model, but because these packs are separate, it's being loaded in a different way. Uh, but that's just basically finding the region in the image where the face or the faces are. And it's then also taking in this segment anything model, which is going to be used to then find the actual faces within the boxes. So where this finds a box that contains a face in the image, this actually finds the pixels which are a part of that face uh, within that image. So that's fed into this as well as our model that we're using for the generation and the clip and the conditioning and uh, basically is going to act as a sampler and then it's going to act as a compositor as well so this this node is finding the faces it's basically running a high-res pass on those faces which the size of that pass is dictated by 
the guide size, and then it's recompositing those resampled faces back onto the original image, which works amazingly well for fixing the faces while still allowing a tremendous amount of detail and unique appearance. And so we'll go ahead and do the same prompt as we did in our last workflow, and we'll go ahead and see what our final results are. Uh, just a quick note on why we still have this simple face fix. In my experience, it's helpful for the final image to use this simple face fix in between our two-pass generation and the advanced face fix method. This GFP GEN model does a good job at fixing some more egregious errors uh, and some really warped eyes and other issues. Uh, and then when we feed that cleaner image into our advanced face fix, uh, it just gives us a better base to work with. And we're not so worried about the sort of smooth appearance given by the GFP GAN model because we're running it through another diffusion pass. So we're able to restore those details that are lost here. And we're still able to take advantage of the improvements that are made. All right, so let's go ahead and run it. So I've reset the generation so that we can get a comparison of all of the results here. So it's just running those first two passes again. Same prompt, same seed. So we'll have the same images and then running that into the simple face fix. And now what it's doing is it's, it's found the images and it's going and it's resampling each face. Or I should say it's found the faces within the images and it's it's resampling each face. So. This will run for every face. So if you have one image with three faces, this will want, run through three times. And there we go, here's our final results. So we can see we have high fidelity and we have distinctness. And we have some good results. We'll just kind of go ahead and walk through just pick the, the top left image to compare for each one. So here's the first pass. You can see there's definitely some issues here. This is, again, a turbo model, although a turbo model, I think, does quite a good job. Uh, this is what we're getting for the first pass. So then we feed that into our second pass, do the high-risk fix, and we do see that the face has improved, but it's still got issues. Then we fed that into our simple face fix, and we see... We've now resolved the issues, but we've lost some distinctness and some fidelity. And finally, we take a look at our advanced face fix and we see that we have good results. No issues, restored fidelity and distinctness. Okay, so now let's take a look at one more prompt that showcases something that's really great about this workflow. So often you can get some good results with faces, even without doing any sort of face restoration, when you just have one face, especially if the face is quite large in the image. But where things really start to fall short is where you're trying to have multiple subjects and therefore multiple faces within an image. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that and see what kind of results this can get us. So we'll just say a professional photo of three people standing in an office. Very simple. We'll see what kind of results we get. Okay. Well, we got more than three sometimes, but that's all right. We're going to take a look at what we got here. You can see very distorted faces. Some of them are all right, but especially around these glasses here, we have some issues. Some of these eyes have issues, so let's take a look at our second pass. Okay, we're starting to resolve some of those issues. Definitely better than our first pass, but certainly not perfect. Once again, typically the eyes are where the issues lie. Then we'll take a look at our simple face fix, and you can see we've fixed a lot of the issues. But again, we've lost some of their distinctness and we kind of have a smooth, almost plasticky appearance. And now we'll go ahead and take a look at 
are final images once they're done processing. This can take a bit longer, and this is why I enjoy using a turbo model for this workflow, uh, because especially when you're generating multiple images that have multiple faces within each image, um, you can get to some very long generation times without a turbo model. So let's take a look at our final results, and you can see we have something much, much, much better than what we started with. All right, and that's how you use face fixing techniques to make your images of people look a little bit more like people. And that's it for this one. <laughs>